This call is being recorded. Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. Um, this is your Sunday School Lesson Edition. And we welcome you to the broadcast on Facebook and also on the conference call. Um, those that are listening to us on Facebook, the conference call number is 910-218-218. 0531 if you want to come and get on a conference call after we end our Facebook uh, session um, at, on a uh, um, conference call we go into an overtime period where we talk and discuss about the word but at this point in time we we want to go to the Lord in prayer um, happy Easter happy resurrection Sunday this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before, and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, God. Because this is Resurrection Sunday morning, Lord. It was early on this Sunday morning, some 2,000 years ago, that you got up out of the grave with all power in heaven and earth in your hands. And so, Lord, because of your death, because of your burial, and because of your resurrection, we now have eternal life for those of us who believe in you, who believe and put our faith in you. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for our sins. The love that, that you shown, the Heavenly Father, by giving your only begotten Son. And Jesus, the love that you showed us by dying upon the cross and, and taking all of that punishment, Lord. Jesus, we say thank you for it right now. Now, Lord, as we get ready to study your word and declare and proclaim your word this day, we just ask you, the Heavenly Father, to, to just anoint afresh, anoint that the word of God might be, be spoken as a Rima word to somebody, an on time word to somebody, a right now word to somebody. We, we pray, dear Lord, that if someone listening to this recording at a later time hears it, that they might also become saved, dear Lord, because that's what this is all about, your, your saving grace. And then, Lord, we ask you to bless this technology that we're listening, that we're on, and that we're using. That everything goes well. Anoint the fresh, Lord. We plead your blood of your blood, Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus right now over everything and everybody, dear Lord. It's in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you. Amen. In the background, you hear Sister Sandra singing He Arose. She recorded that back in in the uh, 90s it's such a wonderful song he arose he arose he arose yes yes he arose hallelujah that's that's what we're going to talk about today he arose he arose hallelujah our sunday school lesson today comes from the gospel of john the gospel of john uh chapter 20 verse 1 John chapter 20 verse 1 down to verse 10 uh, I'm going to read out of a New Living Translation if I, if you don't mind uh, not New Living but New International uh, Version uh, it says early on the first day of the week while it was still dark Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and, 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 and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance so she she came she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple the one Jesus loved and and said they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him so Peter and the other disciples started off for the tomb 
both were running, but the other disciples, other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He 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 bent over and looked in at the stripes of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the stripes of linen lying there as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separated from the linen. Finally, the other disciples who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to raise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Amen, amen, amen. Now, um, some, the international commentary also has a, a another scripture that they put along with this, which is uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Uh, we, 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 if, if time uh, allows, we'll get to that part of the scripture also. But, but right here, right here, there is more than enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. To talk about today. And as we have been talking in the last few weeks in Sunday school, the, the main focus of this quarter in Sunday school is to talk about the love of God and how, how powerful and how wonderful his love is. And so today, this, this God's love is, is, is God's love as victory over death. God's love has victory over death. And that's, and that's, that we'll concentrate on this love of God and how it has victory over death. Uh, I, I I simply simply titled this uh, "Victory in Jesus." Yeah, yeah. That that's that old song, "Victory in Jesus." Victory in Jesus. We have victory. Hallelujah in Jesus. And so, as we look at this lesson today. As we look at this lesson today, we're going to look at a few things and, and we're going to talk about a few things as we go over this lesson. And so let me get to my outline here. Um, in this lesson, in this lesson, um, uh, our, our scripture, um, focal scripture, our key verse is verse 8 of John chapter 20. And from the King James Version, it reads this way, then went and also the other disciple which came first to the sepulchre and he saw and believed. He saw and believed. What did he see? He saw an empty tomb. He saw that the Savior had risen. He was told, Jesus told all of his disciples in three days. And now this was the third day Jesus died on the cross on Friday. He stayed there buried in the grave Friday. He stayed buried all day Saturday. But now it was Sunday morning, three days. And now he has risen from the dead. Our key concept that we want to grab hold from this lesson is our hope and our faith is... Uh, it, it, uh, Hope and faith being one and the same is based on believing in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. My keys for kids, keys for kids, I like to make the lesson real simple for the children. The keys for kids is when we pray for God's forgiveness and accept Jesus into our lives, we need to keep having that faith for the rest of our lives. We, it's a continuous faith. It's a continuous victory. It's a continuous saving grace process that, that we go through. And God is constantly saving us. Y'all have heard me say this before, and I'll say it again. He saves us from the penalty of sin. Then in the process of sanctification, he saves us from the very power of sin. And then it goes further that one day he's going to save us 
from the very presence of sin. That's when we all get to heaven. We, we call that glorification. So we go through salvation, then we go through sanctification, and then we eventually will live in heaven with him where there will be no more dying, no more crying, no more sadness, no more tears. That's glorification. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number two, number two for kids, having faith in God means that we love and trust him every day. That's so simple. We got to love and trust him every day. Oh, that, that is so simple to say, but sometimes it's so hard to do. The struggles we go through in our faith with loving God and loving and trusting him. And, and how does that struggle come out? It comes out because we don't show love to others. That's where it gets hard. And then when, 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 when things do get hard financially, physically, mentally, socially, I mean, we go through all kind of stuff and we end up losing trust in God. But, but, but today, just keep your eyes on Jesus. Because Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. And he that begun a good work in us will not fail. He never fails. He that begun a good work will complete it. Oh, hallelujah. And so with this lesson, with this lesson, as we go through this lesson, we're going to remember the events of the resurrection and the power of God's love to overcome death. We're going to celebrate the saving power of, of new life offered in the resurrection. And then we have a job to do. We're going to share with others the power of God's love found in the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our outline comes in two parts. It's just simple. The declaration and the confirmation. The declaration and the confirmation. They, he, it was declared he's alive. And then it was confirmed that, the, that he had rose and the tomb was empty. In this lesson, we have some people that we need to talk about, Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John. And Mary Magdalene uh, is, is also called Mary, is, is Mary of um, Madela. Uh, she, she, she traveled with Jesus and was one of his followers, and, and she witnessed both Jesus' resurrection. And, 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 and some have said that she's also the one that Jesus cast out seven demons from. So she, she, she plays an important role in this. And then we have Peter. Peter is that disciple, that disciple of Jesus who was very outspoken, that disciple that was in the inner circle of Jesus. And, and, and just as, as boldly as he was devoted to Jesus and with all this abundant zealous uh, zeal that he had, he was also one that would say things and Jesus had to correct him. You remember when he was, Jesus was... Uh, at the Last Supper, and he was getting ready to wash the disciples' feet, and Peter was like, no, you ain't washing my feet. And, you know, and Jesus said, no, nah, man, I got to do this once Jesus corrected and explained it to him. And then he said, oh, well, shoot, don't, even, don't just wash my feet, wash my whole body, because that's the kind of person Peter was. He was one with great zeal. He, 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 he was one with great devotion for Jesus. He always did things at a bold manner. Hallelujah. And so that's 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 what's going on here. So now let, let's let's set let's set the backdrop. Let's set the backdrop of this lesson. Let's set the backdrop of this lesson. It's 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 Sunday morning and 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 and, and Jesus died on, on Friday. He he hung, he bled, he died and, and that was his death. And then then Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus got Jesus' body and Joseph gave him uh, a tomb for, for a couple of days, if you will. And, and Mary Magdalene and the other Marys and all the other women came and they anointed his body and they wrapped him in the, in the, in the burial clothes and put the burial clothes over his face and placed them in the tomb. And then, then a, a, a pilot and, and then the chief priest got together and said, well, you got to seal that tomb and seal that tomb with a stone and, and then put the seal of, 
of, uh, of, of, of Caesar on it and then put some guards around it so that the people uh, uh, won't say, won't come and try to steal his body. We got to guard him. And then here it is, Resurrection Sunday morning and the Passover is over so they can walk around because during the Passover the people were supposed to stay close to home and weren't supposed to do anything during Passover. Now it's Sunday morning, the first day of the week. And Mary and the other women get up early in the morning. And they're going to the tomb because they did a rush job on Friday to wrap his body. And they wanted to complete it. And they get to the tomb. Mary and the rest of them were thinking, well, who going to roll the stone away? But when they got there, the stone was already rolled away. And so, they got there. They, they were confused. When they saw the stone rolled away, they were confused. When they saw that, that the tomb was empty. And all that they could think about was that somebody had stolen the body. So Mary, she ran back to the disciples and, and reported these events. I've always considered this very significant that, that, that it was the women that went to the tomb, Mary. It was the women that, that, that God allowed to, to, to get the first good news that Jesus had a rose. It, it, it's significant because during that time, a, a woman would, would, would be disqualified as a witness in the Jewish culture. But God chose her and, and the others to be the first witness of this resurrection, even though society had automatically disqualified them because of their gender. Oh, many people will disqualify us because of the words that we preach or the past that we have. They'll find some reason to say, I ain't going to listen to that preacher. I ain't going to listen to that. Whether it's their gender, whether it's their background, whether it's their past, whether it's their color, their race, or their creed. Oh, no, 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 no. God chooses who he wants to to teach and preach his gospel. Jesus, I mean, if God, excuse me, even wants to use a donkey <laughs> to tell a prophet what to do, he can do it. And we know that he uses little children all the time to say powerful things. Oh, hallelujah. So after Mary reported to the disciples what she had seen, John, the author of this book, he, he, he humbly refers to himself as the other disciples. Listen to this text. Listen to this text uh, from, from, from the New Living Translation, verses 1 through 4. Early on, early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found the stone had been rolled away from the entrance and she ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved. And she said, they, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciples started out for the tomb and they, they both ran. They both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. That other disciple is John. In his gospel, he never mentions his name. He just says that other disciple. And in this case, he says that other disciple whom Jesus loved. Remember, at the, at the Lord's Supper, he was the one that was leaning on Jesus. Laying on his chest while they were eating. Yes, John, the gospel writer. John, 
the one that, that, that gave us that scripture, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, wrote that in his gospel. John, that one that, 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 wrote the book of Revelations to tell us how things are going to be up in heaven. God gave him that vision while he was being persecuted on the island of Patmos. That John. Outran Peter. Outran him. Beat him to the tomb. Peter. John are now at the tomb. They heard the declaration that the body is missing. Now they are there to confirm it. And so we get to verses 5 through 10. Listen to them from the New Living Translation. He stooped down and looked in and saw the linen Wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. That's John. Then Peter, Simon Peter arrived and went inside and he also noticed the linens wrapped lying there with the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciples who had reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For until then they hadn't understood the, the, the scripture that Jesus said must, said Jesus must raise from the dead. And they went back off to where they were staying. They went back home. Here it is. They went to the tomb. They went there as fast as they could. With all the strength that they had, they went to the tomb. They had to see with their own eyes. John outran Peter. They loved and they honored Jesus. And that caused them to run with every ounce of strength they had. Because they wanted to know what had happened to Jesus. And they witnessed and they looked inside of the tomb. The tomb was empty. Only thing that was there was the linen cloth. And it laid on the tombstone. Where the body had been laid and the wrappings were still there. But then Peter saw something. He saw the face cloth. Not lying where the head was. But lying over on the side. Folded up. Now many scholars have 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 taken this to mean that 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 Jesus did not get up in a hurry. <laughs> oh hallelujah. He got up right on time. And when he got up with this glorified body, his body just came up out of that linen cloth and and then he had the one wrapped around his face and he took it and he folded it up and placed it to the side. Because Jesus does everything decently and in order. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. When he rose on Sunday morning with all power in heaven and earth in his hand, he took his time because it was the fullness of time. And when Peter saw this, he was amazed. He noticed that little detail. Then John walked in. And when John saw it, it said he believed. 
it's so interesting to me. It's so interesting to me that that what John saw and made him believe, he didn't see Jesus. He saw that the fact that Jesus was not there. And that's what made him believe. Because he could hear the words of Christ in his, in his head. The words of Christ that says that if they destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up again. Mary Magdalene thought that the body had been stolen at first. Peter and, and John went to confirm what was going on, but when they got there, the confirmation was different. It wasn't that his body had been stolen, because if his body had been stolen, they would have taken the wrappings. They would have taken the linen. They would have taken the linen cloth. But no, they didn't take that. It was left there as evidence. That Jesus had rose from the dead. Peter and John had heard Jesus talking about this resurrection. But they still did not understand it and connect what he was teaching. They couldn't put this thing together. They just couldn't get it together in their head. And they left and went back home, wondering, dealing with what they had seen. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God for this opportunity to just give this quick lesson on Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Like I said, this Peter passage that they have, with the Sunday school lesson, it says something real powerful. And I'm not going to read all of the scripture, but I'm just going to read verses 8 through 9 of 1 Peter chapter 1. Though you have not seen, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with the inexpressible and glorious joy. For you have received the end result of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Yes, we ought to rejoice in Christ. We ought to love Christ. We ought to trust Christ and we ought to receive him in faith that we might receive the salvation of of our soul. Glory to God. In conclusion, Christ's resurrection is the turning point of all history. On that incomparable day, God defeated death for all time. He turned the tides of human life, bringing the evil one and those who serve him to their knees. He brought the fullness of his undeserving love and blessings to all who put their faith in the risen Christ. Look to the empty tomb. Look to the lives of those who declared that Christ of the empty tomb to be Lord. And you do also that we can have victory in him so I end with these words I can't never let these words go oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your victory yes Jesus is alive he's no longer here he didn't get up out of that grave. But all power in heaven and earth in his hands. And we will rejoice and praise his name. Because one glad morning, when our earthly life is over, we'll fly away and we will be with the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Let us end this message on Facebook and get ready to go and talk about this a little bit on the conference call. With these, with this prayer, the prayer of salvation. The Heavenly Father, we come praying right now. Those that are listening to this recording, to pray with them. Dear Lord, we confess and believe in our heart that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And Lord, we believe and confess that you raised him from the dead. Now Lord, please forgive us of our sins. Cover us in your blood. Save our soul. We invite you, Jesus, into our heart. Now make us whole. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly believe it in your heart, you are now saved, set free. Be a blessing and tell someone else about the risen Savior. As always on Facebook, be blessed and be a blessing till next Sunday.